When Fujifilm drastically reduced production of their color stocks, it was easy to think this is the end of an era. But it was also the beginning of an indie revolution that saw small companies picking up the pieces and contributing to analog photography's increased popularity, which even had companies like Kodak changing course and expanding their color film offerings. But undoubtedly, the most surprising new color film stock comes from black and white giant Guilford. Is this a film renaissance or simply just a repeat? I'm David, and this is the whole picture. A few years ago, Ilford released a single-use camera, the Ilford Ilfo Color Rapid Retro, loaded with ISO 400 color film. I tried it out, intending to do a video on it, but never really found the right angle. The camera design looked very similar to Agfa's LaBox single-use camera, so I thought about doing some kind of comparison, or even taking the film out of the Rapid Retro to use in a proper camera. But luckily, I didn't have to do that, because when I went shopping for film the other day, I found a canister of Ilfo Color Vintage Tone. While Ilford is now primarily known for their black and white products, they actually offered color negative stocks under the Ilfo color name from around the 1960s to 1990s. That being said, this doesn't look like a reissuing based on an old formula and more of a throwback in name only. More on the possible origins of this stock later in the video though. As Ilford touts vintage tones right on the box, I decided to go with the Minolta M Rockor 28mm f2.8 and the Leica Elmar M 50mm f2.8 lenses. They both typically render contrasty and sharp images that retain some vintage character, so I thought it would be a good fit for this film, but even with that, I was pretty surprised by how the images turned out. Vintage is of course a pretty ambiguous term that will mean different things to different people, Ilfo Color Vintage Tones renders cooler images with lower contrast and saturation, to the point where some images can even feel monochromatic. And just for reference, here's a comparison between a photo taken on my phone and a photo on Ilfo Color. It's not a perfect side-by-side -side by any means, but the photo on my phone is much closer to how I remember the actual scene. Typically, I overexpose my color film by half a stop or a full stop, and in some cases, this did render more punchy, vibrant images on Ilfo Color, but overall, the look is very low contrast and really not what I was expecting based on my experience with Ilford's excellent black and white products. Which got me very curious. Checking Ilford Photo's UK site, I was puzzled at the lack of any mention of Ilfo Color products at all. The Ilford Japan site, on the other hand, did have some information, with product pages for Ilfo Color Film and the single-use cameras, which mentioned Ilford's history with color film and some flowery language on the vintage photos you could possibly take with the stock, but there were no sample photos, charts, or any kind of visual resources at all, really. Some more research led me to a photographer who had actually taken a roll out of the single-use camera, and it rendered similar results to mine. But I also found a Reddit post that might shed some light on the possible origins of this film. It seems to very closely resemble Orwo's Wolf in Color NC500 film stock, even down to the boxes, which share a similar color scheme. I couldn't find any mention from Ilford directly on the origins of Ilvo Color, so it's all speculation at this point, but it seems very likely this is a rebranding that leverages Ilford's name to market a lesser known existing product. A practice that is, sadly, far too common in photography's history. Brand licensing or acquisition, like in the case of Polaroid during a time of financial difficulty, has led to some questionable products and practices that can prey upon less informed consumers. But film and camera manufacturers, like any company, are often multifaceted and go through changes of ownership and structure that at first might seem irrelevant to end users but have bigger implications than you might expect. Ilford was founded in 1987, and while many of us will be familiar with their black and white products, the company has gone through many iterations. For this video, a relevant change took place in 2005 that saw the formation of Harman Technology, which would continue to manufacture film like HP5 and darkroom photographic paper while licensing the Ilford branding. As of today, these classic film stocks and other products like Kentmuir Film are under the Ilford Photo label and since 2018 feature a Harman Technology sub-branding on the packaging. Branding that is suspiciously not present on the Ilford Ilfo Color Vintage Tone box. So I think you know where this is going. 
If you look closely at the box, you'll see that the Ilford logo and name belong to Ilford Imaging Europe, a separate entity from Harman Technology. It is easy to confuse the two companies, especially as they both offer single-use cameras, Harman's being black and white, and of course, both share the classic Ilford logo. Regardless of the branding though, the real disappointment to me is the missed opportunity to get a truly new color film stock from one of the most historic manufacturers out there that would have really solidified the renaissance analog photography is going through right now. And I had similar thoughts in my video on the Leica M6 reissue, but this is not to discount or diminish the value of repackaging products like this. It can often offer photographers access to otherwise unavailable tools, or say in the case of Cinestill, inaccessible processing that I believe have contributed greatly to film's modern popularity. But brands like Cinestill and Orowo tend to be transparent about their product's origins while offering plenty of resources, so when you have vague language like vintage tone with a recognizable brand behind it, to market something that might not be everyone's cup of tea, at an opportune moment, I can't help but feel this is more of a regression rather than a renaissance. Anyways, I hope you found the video interesting or informative. This kind of rebranding tactic we often see in the camera industry is something I would like to explore more in the future, so let me know what you think about the topic, and please get subscribed to see that. I would really appreciate it if you also shared my work with friends or family that would find it interesting or enjoyable. I'm David, and this is The Whole Picture.